Renee, I'm going to start with you. There's so much evidence that we in the media, that the public has seen regarding 1-6. It's still, there still is a need, right, for a narrative that is going to string this all together and put it in context specifically for Americans who may not have been paying attention to every piece that has dropped bit by bit. How much power will these public hearings hold for the American people? And how does the committee make sure that they get this right? You know, I, I think that what it reminds me of is when I was a kid and my grandfather was glued to the television watching the Watergate hearings. And he wasn't the only American who was doing that. That is what drove home for many people in this country exactly what was happening in the Nixon White House. We already know that what was happening with Trump prior to, to January 6th and on January 6th is exponentially worse than anything Nixon could have dreamt of. So I think it's extraordinarily important to lay this out for the American people, for them to actually see piece by piece what happened, but also to watch Republicans try to change that narrative when what's really vilifying them is are their own words and their own actions. Yeah, Cleve, I, there's so much that has happened. Again, I think the latest piece is these new John Eastman emails. Is there a different direction in which those emails take the committee? Well, I, I think one of the, the larger connective tissue pieces that we're seeing is an attempt to, to show that the folks rioting outside and scaling the walls of of the Capitol had the same aim, if not the same methodology of folks inside the White House, mm. of legislators inside of, of Capitol Hill. And so one of the things that, that the committee is trying to do or that we see through these leaks and this steady drip drip of stuff is to to connect everything together and say it's not just, you know, these these screaming marching people on Capitol Hill. It's also elected legislators and people who are supposed to be serving the public interest. Right, and that has been the entire question about accountability, right? That accountability had to come from those at the top, those who still have power. Katie, to that point, you have Mary Trump, the former president's niece, saying it makes sense that Ivanka and Jared have already spoken to the committee. Take a listen. It's really important to remember that every relationship in my family is transactional. Uh, and every relationship is conditional. So if it gets to the point where uh, Ivanka and Jared feel that they are in more danger if they continue to defend their father than they would be if they cooperated, uh, then that's that's what will happen. Because, you know, what Donald, I don't think, understands is that his turning on them or other people is useless because he's the big fish that everybody's going after, right? So, Katie, I, I want your thoughts on that and also your sense of what we could expect from Don Jr. sit down with the committee. Absolutely, Alicia. I mean, what we're seeing is that the committee is going to come after you however they can. And to hear that Ivanka, and we're hearing that the allies close to Trump, the closest of the Trump allies, his family members, are speaking to the committee just proves that they're going to go to whatever lengths they need to to hear from whoever they want to get more and, and gather more information from what happened before January 6th, during and after January 6th. Uh, Meadows is a pure, perfect example of that. He's saying right now that he's being vilified uh, because because of the leaks of all the information that he did present to this committee and then stopped cooperating and then the subpoenas came and now he's trying to push back against it. And that's not working right now because right now the public's getting to see a whole treasure trove of information that he probably thought they were not ever going to see and there was going to be more pushback. And so what we're seeing right now is hopefully an opening for a lot of folks who are close to Trump, even members of Congress who or and lawmakers who are just are probably sitting back thinking they are untouchable at this moment that that's not going to happen, that we're going to see that more and more folks are going to come forward. I mean, we already know that 900 interviews and depositions have already happened and that there were thousands upon thousands of documents that have been gathered. We can only see this going even further until the eight hearings that are coming up. So this is a great sign that the committee is putting pressure and it's going to have pressure put on them to have more folks come forward.